I'm Robin Starr. I'm the Clinical Value Analysis Lead here at Sharp Healthcare and was the co-chair for the NFIT Implementation Project. The primary reason that we chose to adopt NFIT was the California Assembly Bill 444 that we uh, were updated on in October of 2014 and then the additional Joint Commission information that we received related to Sentinel events. So we started our project back in October of 2014 uh, by gathering an initial group of stakeholders together and to hopefully sit down and identify exactly what steps we were going to need to follow to approach this massive project. We started with identifying the appropriate process owners, the stakeholders, gathering information on the suppliers that had all the products that we would need to change. Um, one of the initial steps was to do a gap analysis to identify where we had uh, tasks necessary at each of our hospitals. And all in all, it took us about right at two years to, before we were able to implement. We did identify a multidisciplinary team of stakeholders that included pharmaceutical representatives, our ICU nurses, our NICU nurses, we had quality and safety involved, and we one of the key elements that made it wonderful to work with was our executive sponsors. It's important to have an executive sponsor for any of our projects so we know that we have the leadership support and drive to help us through any obstacles that we encounter as a team. What I feel our keys to success uh, did include were the stakeholders. We worked really hard to identify the stakeholders that are involved up front so that we, uh, we were a multi-hospital system. We needed to make sure we had representation from all the hospitals and the individual departments at each hospital and then set a path of communication outward so we could disseminate our regular updates outward to everybody. Another key to success that I feel uh, worked really well in our favor was that early on we gathered all of a full list of the products that are involved in intro feeding. And we identified the suppliers involved, connected with those suppliers to find out what their timeline was, and then worked hard to standardize where we could. Uh, we tried to reduce some inventory SKUs, product codes, and um, made every effort to get the correct transition numbers and uh, get the inventory established. Another key to success for us was our goal to really focus on maintaining communication outward. We had our regular meetings with our task force. We then carried that information forward to the various service line value analysis teams. I personally connected with the vendors and the vendor reps and then our contracts, our contracted suppliers. So it was important to keep the communication on a regular uh, timeline and uh, be able to respond to any of the questions or concerns as we move forward with the individual hospitals and clinicians. One thing I would suggest that I wish we had done maybe a little bit better was to clearly define the roles and responsibilities of our process owners a little bit more than we did. Um, and also to coordinate and collaborate with our peer hospitals in the area. Uh, I think we've seen some gaps because other hospitals were not on the same timeline that we were. Uh, when a patient is discharged, my recommendation would be that it's very clear in the discharge instructions that the patient's leaving with an infit enteral device, uh, making sure that your receiving facility is aware of that and that if necessary you send a couple of infit syringes with that patient just for an additional safety measure. My name is Lori Rhodes. I am currently the Director of Nursing and Patient Care Services for Sharp Home Infusion Services. We are part of Sharp Healthcare which is a large multi-level organization and we consist of hospitals, specialty hospitals, and home care, hospice, as well as affiliated with a large physician group. I was uh, very interested in NFID and became the co-chair for this initiative, this large safety initiative, and really wanted to add a clinical perspective and keep home care in the loop as well. So part of the success of implementing this large initiative was to actually get a framework around how we wanted to organize and start this. I went on to the GETSA website, I also looked at what Joint Commission had to say, and fortunately they offered a lot of tools that helped to get our minds around this. Um, doing a gap analysis was really helpful and that helped to organize our thoughts. The Joint Commission has that supplied on the GETSA website and I think that was a major key to um, formulating how our meetings were going to be structured and where we were going to go. So for those of you going through this process and this implementation, some of the things that we learned 
were that communication is important, but not just outgoing communication. If you have process owners, people that are actually taking this information to the end users, it is so important that you have a feedback loop, some feedback loop, some sort of tool. We used what we call a diffusion tracker that would assign tasks to the process owners, and then those process owners would then um, kind of indicate when that task was completed and, and roll back into the task force in the group so that we knew there was accountability, that the communication was being transferred, that the education was being done. I don't think we did enough of that. I think we could have done more of that and had better two-way communication. Accountability is really important. Another lesson learned is to really include the outsets of your patient experience. Inside the hospital, working with the NFIT connectors, the NFIT transitions, um, and everything, all the education is pretty simple. But where things get forgotten is that patient coming through the ED that has an NFIT device or not an NFIT device, and what you're gonna do, and then leaving. When the patient leaves the hospital, do they have adequate supplies? Can they be managed at home? Does the post-acute care facility even know about NFIT? And I think we could have focused on those areas a little bit better, and I think the transition would have been smoother. I think another really important key issue is to not be afraid to speak up. So we're all learning together. We're all on this road together. It doesn't always go smoothly, and there are gonna be little gaps and glitches. So if, for example, if there's a product that you receive from a vendor that doesn't quite work, it's leaking a little bit, it doesn't quite fit, absolutely, right away, speak up to the vendor and let them know because they're making adjustments based on the feedback that they're getting from the users. So we really all have to work together. This is a, a kind of a process in motion and we are working to make sure that the patient really gets the best that they can get in, in the end, in the end of it.